What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Jamison Crowder's route running. We're going to be talking about how you guys can run a square cut, how you guys can use a square cut to set up a fade release against this off-man coverage look, and then we're going to be talking about how you guys can create some separation off the line against an inside leverage, pressed up, either safety or corner, and you got to run a comeback, and then we're going to talk about how you guys can attack leverage. So we're going to cover a lot of topics today. I think it's going to be a good video if you guys are just learn how to be just an overall better route runner and add some more, more tools to your tool belt and just become a better overall receiver, okay? And guys, again, if you're a receiver and you want to improve your hands check out that link in the description it says improve your hands in 30 days full 30 day catching program that will really help your game improve guarantee that your hands will get better your grip strength will improve hand eye coordination will improve hope to get you guys on that soon again check out that link in the description it says improve your hands in 30 days let's get started so jameson crowder is going to be here we're going to be looking at this kind of like tight look not so much maybe like a stack look you consider not so much a stack look but the main thing is that he's off the ball and he's going to be getting almost like i don't want to say a free release but he's got some space to work right so taking this inside release right here should be no problem if we set him up outside right so let's watch this thing full speed so he gives him this like hard step to the outside takes the inside works this square cut and freezes this db to the outside so this is another example of when you guys can use a square cut, right? Now, this can build off of like a fake throw-by technique where you snap two, three, four, and you give that jab to the inside, and then you come back underneath, however you want to play it. So it kind of it kind of builds off of um, a couple different things. And then after this, we're going to be talking about it because Crowder loves this square cut. There's a lot of clips that I could have used at this time from the Jets where he's working this square cut on a dig, but obviously there's not all content I can use because of copyright. So this is one of those examples, and then we build off of that, and we're going to talk about how it sets up a fade in a second. So when he takes this hard jab to the outside, he's selling like he just wants to take an outside release right now right it's important that you bring your body there it's a hard it's explosive step but after we step to the outside we're bursting back up inside okay i'm bursting off that inside arch of my outside foot and i'm really making sure i'm running i'm getting up to the depth of this play right so now when he's here and this db doesn't have hands on him and he's trailing right he was probably over anxious to be honest with you over anxious to play the outside release because of this right here he's got help over the middle right and no db is going to just jump away outside when they don't have help over the middle so why not play the fade why not try to take away the fade we got some separation we could get our um, I'm sorry, we got help on the inside. So if this guy gets some separation on the inside, that's fine. Let's stay relaxed. Let's stay calm. Let's just make sure that I get hands on him. Now, this DB doesn't have hands, right? And Crowder does a good job of pushing vertical. And when he snaps this thing off, he does a pretty good job of freezing him, right? Now, this, this receiver coming across does exactly what he's supposed to do. He brings this linebacker, this safety down. So this DB loses that safety or loses that inside help once he comes down on this um, kind of like drag route coming across his face. So our job is to make sure we freeze him to the outside. We still want to make him think that we're we're trying to run to the outside. He's sitting there, and then we could create some space. So what does he work? He works this kind of like square cut. So he snaps two, and then he gives a jab three. And that jab three, it's really important that you see how he gives that little head and shoulder fake right there to sell like he's coming back to the outside, like he's maybe just trying to break this thing off, throw him by, and then go. But he just snaps two, three, and throws his head and shoulder fake to the outside to freeze this DB to the outside, right? So now there's a pretty good job here leaving him. Great job snapping on a dime. The most important thing about a square cut, I think, is that you got to have tempo to it right when you snap it off you got to be able to just pause right i wouldn't even necessarily say a pause but you almost like slow yourself down when you snap i slow myself down i throw that jab to the outside and i get him sitting on this outside move right trying to sell like i'm running an out route and then when i'm here i do my job of accelerating out widening the gap and keeping that separation i just created all that all those moves at the top of the route are pointless guys if i don't keep that separation and accelerate over the middle and that's exactly what crowder does here you see how he's able to accelerate snaps his head around and and widens the distance with that DB. It's a great job. Let's watch it again full speed. Great job working this square cut, setting him up to the outside, getting that DB to jump, and being able to create some space. It's a great job. So now we're going to be looking at the, kind of the same thing here, but he's going to be running this fade. Ball is a little bit thrown to the outside, but this is a pretty good job of when you're against an off-man situation, how you could get him sitting on a fade. Right? So you see how he bursts out. He takes this kind of like widened split. He snaps this thing down, and he works this kind of like one-two. So he's here. One, one, two, right? You see what I'm talking about here? He gives this kind of little stutter step and then he throws this one, two to sell like he's going to be working off of that square cut, right? He snaps down, gives him a little stutter, throws to the outside and maybe breaks it on a dig, right? Trying to get him to jump to this outside step here. Maybe he's worked this before. Maybe we attack his outside shoulder. I get him to turn his hips. I snap this thing off. I go one, two, three, four, and I throw this head and shoulder fake to the outside and then I break back underneath him, right? So now what this is building off of is exactly that. We're trying to sell like I'm just trying to run this square cut right now. 
now, right? This is something that he likes to run a lot, and this is how you can vary off of it, right? Especially if he had to run like an out route or something like that. This is more of like a choice, like he had to run some kind of a choice route. This is a perfect example of how you guys can create space, and it builds off of something that you've already ran. So you see how when he comes here again, he snaps, gives that little stutter, one-two, and again, that head and shoulder fake, anytime you guys throw a one-two like that is so important because that's what's going to get him to drive, right? And not just a head and shoulder lean. I'm talking about a whole throw with my upper half because where's this DB supposed to be watching? He's supposed to be watching those hips. And if you throw those hips back to the outside, bam, throw those hips, that's what's going to get him to just at least sit because that's where he's supposed to be watching. He's not going to be looking at your eyes, shouldn't be looking at your shoulders. His eyes shouldn't be high. If you're a DB and you're watching this, your eyes shouldn't be high. Your eyes should be on his torso. But receivers, how we can work that is focus on really throwing my upper half and throwing my body, but at the same time being able to keep an explosive position with my lower half so I could drive out of there. Now, same thing. So what I got him to lean, I got to make sure I accelerate out. And you see how he keeps his head down after he bursts. He doesn't look right away because he knows he's got to beat him to that spot. He's got to beat him up to this outside corner of the end zone. Quarterback throws this thing up in the air. It's a great job adjusting to this play. It's a great job by Crowder setting this thing up off of a square cut. Your square cut, square cut could do a lot of things for you, right? It can do a lot, a lot of things, especially when you've got time to work it. The thing about the square cut is a lot of guys will work this thing when it's like a zone coverage concept. This is not a zone coverage thing because especially in zone, it's about getting to the window, getting to the open space for the quarterback. And then it gets man coverage is a lot of times about creating separation. And it's a big matchup thing, right? And especially when it's off man, you guys are going down tight like this. And you guys maybe got to run a fade against this off man look. That's a great thing to set up with. I maybe like this, this is how I would think of it. This is how I would teach it. I would teach it maybe snapping with your outside leg and you go like, let's say in this case, it would be right left and then right left again. And you throw your body to the inside. And then maybe if you're working an actual square cut, you snap with the outside leg again, like the last clip you go right left right and you throw that right leg to the outside trying to get this db to jump and then we break it back underneath him and then we build off of it and throw that one too okay so it all builds it's all about having just a plan in your head and being able to execute that plan this is a great thing to do against off man let's watch it again full speed one more time snaps throws that body to the inside that's a great job getting this db to sit against off man if he's inside leverage like that and we got space right his job is to take away the inside right there he's he's betting on okay i can use the sideline as my help so if i get him sitting to the inside Look at all the space I just created for myself. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at him in the slot right here. He's going to be running this kind of 10 yard comeback route, but he's going to be doing this off of like this kind of hesitation skip release, this like hesitation wide step. And we're going to be talking about how this DB plays it perfectly and how your speed can get you some separation. So you see how he gets the hesitation skip, bursts up vertical, gets that DB to commit his hips, and then we're able to snap this thing off, right? So again, especially off the line. Maybe a couple times I've worked this little hesitation skip and this DB has shot over with me and I hit him with this right left and I beat him on a slant, right? Or maybe I slid, he shuffled with me. You see Devontae Adams do this kind of thing all the time. Keenan Allen's another great example. You slide him to the outside, you get him into that open space, you get him to shuffle with you, you break this thing off and take the inside. Whether it's a slant and you hit him with like a one, two or a one, two, three, you give him a little shake on this thing and obviously that takes a little bit longer. So we can't, it's not going to be a slide to the outside, give him like a three step move and then go run a dig. It takes too long. It's it's never going to happen. But if you slide him to the outside and just stick and then just take the inside because he shoots himself out wide, that's what sets up off of this. So maybe we've beat him a couple of times on that. Maybe he's staying disciplined. Oh, if I see this slide again, I'm just going to try to force him to the outside. I'm, I'm not going to give up my inside. I've been beaten too many times here. And then when he slides to the outside, he stays disciplined. Okay, let's just go. We go from zero, hundred. You change up that tempo. You get him to stop his feet. You get him to think that he's playing this thing perfectly and staying disciplined. Now I got to push up vertical. And when I push up vertical right here, I got to make sure that I fully commit my hips and I fully commit my shoulders because what's that going to do? And if I keep the same speed, that's going to get this DB to try to run with you and push vertical and commit to this fade and make him believe fade. So when we slide, we beat him to the outside. And maybe I've hit this another way this can vary. Maybe I've hit this before. Maybe I've slid and then just gone and I beat him over the top. Maybe I didn't even necessarily get the ball. You guys got to work your releases and work your moves and work your speed and pushing vertical when you don't even have the ball. And maybe I beat him a couple times where he's felt my speed. He's like, oh shit, I don't want to get beat over the top. He might be a little bit quicker than me so when I'm running and I get him to commit his hips and run with me and I snap this thing off and my hips are violent because that's how I decelerate when you guys are running full speed the only way to decelerate is not by beating the drum it's not by chopping down it's by snapping your hips being in stride and violently dropping your hips and bringing your chin to your knee that's how you guys are going to be able to create some energy at the top of this break and that's how that energy is going to be able to shoot you out because there's three phases you get the stem you get the break point and then you get the acceleration how you get more acceleration is by creating energy at the top and you 
you see how he snaps this thing off and that energy shoots him back down this 45 degree angle so he could come back to this ball like this eight, eight, 10 to 8 yard comeback and he makes this catch balls out on time it's a great job by Crowder working this release right hesitate off the line give him that little skip he stays disciplined take off 0 100 snap this thing off in stride be violent with your hips that's the only way I'm able to decelerate we know where we're going he doesn't know so if I'm committed to selling vertical and I'm committed to getting him to turn his hips and run with me I can snap this thing off let's watch it again full speed so he hesitates takes off pushes vertical snaps this thing off and makes sure we accelerate out great route okay so now we're going to be talking about this out route here that he runs or like kind of this like it's like a rounded out route but again when we're in an off man scenario like this what is a great thing that we could do attacking his leverage right so if you could come off the line of scrimmage and you attack his leverage like this and you set him up and you attack that in this db's got a couple things that he can do he's either going to commit to it he's either going to roll with you he's either going to backpedal or he's going to sit flat right so if i attack his inside shoulder right and he stays disciplined to the outside okay fine i close the gap with him and i throw him by right that's something that you got you guys got to be able to have a plan for now and i attack his leverage to the inside i make sure that my eyes go to the inside my shoulders go to the inside that's what gets him to commit to this inside move and he's probably because he's giving up this inside leverage and he starts out kind of head up outside leverage he's probably got help over the middle we got to remember that that's what's going to get him to commit his hips and move off this platform now i break this thing off i snap it off and i make sure i accelerate out anytime you guys are working on off man scenario and you got to attack his leverage you're going to be able to create space whether it's you create space to the sideline or maybe he keeps his leverage and you create space over the middle but the most important thing is because you're obviously widening the gap and he's taking a risk here obviously this coverage is very risky i i mean in my opinion for a defense we got to make sure that we accelerate out i got to keep my arms driving i got to create energy at the top of the route and let's run so i could widen the distance and make him pay for giving me all that space great job by crowder attacking leverage here. that's the main thing i wanted to focus on because when you're out of the slot like this fellas if you can attack any kind of corner that walks down you say to you his split might be cut down i wouldn't necessarily call him out of the slot but anytime you got this off band scenario let's attack leverage so we can create some space let's watch it again full speed one more time so he comes off the line here attacks his inside gets him to shoot off this platform and then make sure we accelerate out and make this play it's a great route there by crowder all right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it. again if you guys have any questions at all leave those in the comments i'll get back to you as soon as possible and again if you guys want to improve your hands check out that link in the description it says 30 day improve your hands in 30 days hope to get you guys on that soon i'll see you guys next time